Hello, how you go? How you guys doing? Seems like a while since we have uh, since we have taped. Hopefully, at this point, everybody here is taking the test. I know. For you folks at home, have you taken test number one? If you have not, I don't know why you're watching this lecture, because you should have taken lecture number or test number one over chapters one and two by now. Okay. Um, and be sure to always just be watching your emails, folks at home, for the information that I send you about the test. All right? So, uh, everybody here did pretty good. Uh, I was very proud of them. I hope you did well at home. Okay? Um, so, we're going to move on right now. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Uh, accounting is a very much of a building block course. Right? Are you starting to see that? You know all those questions I asked about, is this a no normal debit or normal credit balance account? Uh, what financial statement does the account go on? Uh, how do you cause the indicated change in the account? Remember all those questions I asked about that on the test? If you did poorly on that section, then your foundation is crumbling, or it was actually never there. You've built on a foundation, well, you have a foundation of sand, okay? And I'm not trying, I'm not scaring anybody here because you all did good on that section, okay? But if you folks at home, if you bombed that section, you have a decision to make. Um, either you need to drop the class or catch up very quickly. But this is not, accounting is not the sort of class where you can say, you know, I didn't get really chapter one and two at all, but boy, am I going to give it my all in chapters three and four. It's not like that. We're going we're gonna to build on chapters one and two. At this point, I can only assume that you have that chapter one and two foundation. Okay? I spend more time on those chapters probably than any other instructor here because I really want to get that foundation solid. Okay? So I'm going to assume you got it. I know the people here in the room do. And I hope you people at home do as well. Okay? All right, we are going to talk today and next few days um, about on a, 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 a subject called adjusting journal entries and adjusting our accounts and how we help that, uh, how that helps us prepare our financial statements. Okay? I want you to really engage. I'm going to be doing a lot of lecture today. We're not going to be doing a lot of in-class stuff. Obviously, we don't have any homework to go over. So please try to engage because this really is an important subject. Um, it's a, it, it is a chapter that some people have difficulty with, but I think if you do what I suggest doing and make sure you do your homework, you'll be okay. Um, okay? All right, let's talk about chapter three, adjusting accounts and preparing financial statements. Now, first of all, we've talked about this, but we can and we do divide time up into accounting periods in accounting. Okay? So we can divide things up into a year or a quarter or a month. Okay? That's why when we prepared our income statement and our statement of equity, we said for the month ending December 31, 2011, or for the year ending December 31, 2011, right? So we divide time up into accounting periods because we can make yearly financial statements, we can do monthly, we could do quarterly, we could do a weekly financial statement. As a matter of fact, there's one type of company that does financial statements at the end of each day. You know what type of industry that is? The banking industry. A lot of banks prepare a complete set of financial statements at the end of each day. Okay? But we can and we do uh, divide up time into accounting periods. Okay? Um, we have not really used the term accrual basis of accounting, but we have talked about its characteristics. Okay. First of all, let's talk about the cash basis of accounting. The cash basis of accounting, we recognize revenues whenever the cash is received, and we recognize expenses and record them whenever the cash is paid. Is that how we've been doing things? Absolutely not. And what we're going to find is the cash basis of accounting is not generally accepted accounting principles for the most part. Okay. We don't, we're not so focused on when cash is coming in and when cash is going out. What you're going to find is if we use the cash basis of accounting, 
it would give us very erratic financial statements and it actually is very easy to manipulate financial statements if you use the cash basis uh, and, you're, and you don't have the, the sort of business that should be doing that. Okay? So back to the slide. The cash basis of accounting is not generally accepted accounting principles. What we use is the accrual basis of accounting. The accrual basis of accounting. And in that basis of accounting, we recognize revenues when they are earned. And when are they earned? You guys remember? When the product or service has been provided, right? It doesn't necessarily hinge on when cash comes in. So with the accrual basis of accounting, we recognize revenues when they're earned. And we record expenses when they are incurred. The accrual basis of accounting is what we utilize in our financial statements. And I'll show you some examples of why we do that here in a little bit. All right? Is there any questions on that? I want to go through an example here. And let's just take a look right here. Switch over to the Elmo. Okay? I want to make sure you guys can see that. All right? All right, let's read that together. On December 29, 2010, our company pays $6,000 cash for six months of auto insurance coverage for our fleet of company vehicles. The coverage is for the period of January 1, 2011 through June 30, 2011. Okay? Companies pay auto insurance just like you pay auto insurance. You have to pay it before the coverage actually begins, don't you? Right? Or otherwise, people would just wait and go, well, I didn't have a wreck this month, so I'm not going to pay for auto insurance, right? No, you have to pay before your coverage actually starts, okay? So let's go back to this example. Okay. Now, one more time. On December 29th, our company pays $6,000 cash for six months of auto insurance coverage for our fleet of company vehicles. The coverage is for the period of January 1st, 2011 through June 30, 2011. You with me? So that is for six months, right? Okay. Let me draw a little timeline here. Just give me a second here, if you would. Uh, that's December. That's January. That's February. That's March. That's April. This is May, and this will be June. You with me? Okay, if we were using the cash basis of accounting, then we would recognize $6,000 of expense in December. Boom. Boom. All of it in December. Because that's when the cash went out, correct? We recognize the entire $6,000 of expense in December because that's when all the cash went out. But do you see how that's not really the best reflection of reality? Because really, didn't that $6,000 that we paid, it benefited six months, didn't it? Don't you think it would be better if somehow we could do this a different way? And you probably can know where I'm kind of going with this, but let me finish my timeline down here. Once again, that's December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. Wouldn't it be better if somehow we could recognize $1,000 worth of expense for each of those six months. Do you see how that's really more of a reflection of reality? Does that make sense? Do you see, and this, this is actually what we're going to do with the accrual basis of accounting. Is we are going to do this, we're going we're to structure things so that we recognize 1,000 of expense for each of those months. Because think about it. 
we paid $6,000 for six months of auto insurance. So basically that's $1,000 worth of insurance coverage, the cost per month, right? Does that make sense? These are the periods that that benefited, all right? Now I want you to notice something. I want to point something out and make sure it's clear. In both of these situations, we paid cash on December 29th. Please don't mistakenly think that here we've worked a payment plan or something like that. You, know, you see what I'm saying? No, in both of these situations, we paid in December. But with the cash basis, we recognize the entire expense when the cash is paid, which would be December. Whereas the accrual basis, we want to recognize the expense really when those expenses were incurred, when they were utilized by the company. Understand? Okay. Um, I also want you to recognize that under the cash basis, do you see how your financial statements would really be wacky? You'd say, holy smokes, why is our December net income so low? Well, it's because we had this big expense for auto insurance and so it really you know, got deducted in arriving at net income. Your financial statements would really not reflect reality. Okay? So we're going to talk about using the accrual basis of accounting. Now, what we want to do, and you know, you're, you're, you have another example here in your slides. I don't really like it just because there's just too many months. I think students kind of get lost in the numbers. But yes, Marlon? In both ways, aren't. Um isn't the same amount of money coming out. It's both going out in December. So yes. So in reality, the right. money's gone. Going back to the, uh, yes, in both situations, we are paying $6,000 cash on December 29th. This is not a difference in the way the cash is leaving our company. This is a difference in how the expense is recognized on our books. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Good question. Okay, once again, in the accrual basis of accounting, we use the revenue recognition principle, don't we? We recognize revenues when they are earned. When are they earned? When we provided the product or service to the customer. Now, I'll remember when we were going through the assumptions and principles in chapter one, and I, we came to the matching principle, and I said, let's talk about that one later? Well, this is later, okay? I want you to understand the matching principle. The matching principle states that we should attempt to match the expenses to the same time periods in which they helped create revenue. Again, it's not hinged on when the cash was necessarily paid. We want to match the expenses to the same periods in which they helped create revenue. The matching principle is a very important principle. Do you see, going back to the ELMO, that this is a better following of the matching principle because that insurance that we paid for, $6,000 for six months, that helped provide revenue for those six months, right? Specifically $1,000 each month, right? If we don't have company vehicles, we probably can't operate our business. We can't create revenue. So we want to match the expenses to the periods in which they helped create revenue. Understand? All right. Any questions on that? Please don't hesitate to ask questions. What we're going to thus talk about is adjusting journal entries. How are we going to do this? How are we going to accomplish this uh, abidance of the matching principle, per se? Well, we're going to use an adjusting journal entry. Let's talk about, and I, and I will abbreviate these AJEs. An AJE is an adjusting journal entry. What is an adjusting journal entry? Well, it is a type of journal entry. Okay? It's listed with all the journal entries. It's just a special type of journal entry. It has the same rules. The total debits have to equal the total credits. The accounts being debited are listed first, then the accounts being credited, all that sort of stuff. But an adjusting journal entry is a type of journal entry and it is recorded to do two things. 
to bring an asset or liability account balance to its proper amount and to recognize a revenue or expense. It does two things. It brings an asset or liability account balance to its proper amount and it recognizes a revenue and expense. Cool? Couple other things about adjusting journal entries. They are always made on the last day of the period. Now I don't say the last day of the month or the last day of the year. I'm specifically saying AJEs are made on the last day of the period because some companies just prepare annual financial statements and thus would just make AJEs on the last day of the year. There's other companies who do monthly financial statements and they would do AJEs each month. But they are always made on the last day of the period. We make them and they help us prepare the financial statements and help ensure their accuracy. Another thing, this is important, the cash account is never part of an adjusting journal entry. Never, 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 never will you debit or credit cash in your AJE. If you've debited or credited cash in your AJE, then you've made a mistake, okay? Um, let me tell you another rule um, about AJEs. Let's come off the PowerPoints if we can. Um, this is a Dave Krug special, okay? This isn't in your book. This is something I figured out way back when I was in school and it helped me so I will pass it along to you with, for no extra charge, okay? So what I want you to do is write this down because it's not in your book. I want you to spell out the word real. Like Dave Krug is a real smart guy, all right? Real, okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to draw a line down the middle of the word real. And what do you think these letters stand for? Revenues, expenses, or expense, assets, and liabilities. Okay? You with me? Every AJE, every AJE that you make will affect one of these from the left side of the line and one of these from the right side of the line. Always, always, always. So it'll either affect an expense and a liability or an expense and an asset. Or a revenue and an asset or a revenue and a liability. Always, always, always. So it's never going to affect a revenue and expense or two assets or an asset and a liability. It's always one from the left side and one from the right side. Does that make sense? Now I think that's helpful for a couple reasons. Uh, one, sometimes people can get half the entry. Like they say, I know we should credit a liability here, but what's the other side of the entry? Well, you have to debit one of these, right? It narrows down your choices, okay? Now let me tell you something else about AJEs. Every AJE that you make, it will either debit an expense, and of course it will credit some other account, or it will credit a revenue. Okay? Every AJE you make will either debit an expense or it will credit a revenue. And I've already, so I've already told you this side, so the other part of that is one of these. Does that make sense? Now this may not make a whole lot of sense what I'm saying now. I want you to go back and reflect on it after we've talked about these a little more. Are you with me? Okay. Any questions on that? What I want to do now is stay with the Elmo and I want to go back to this example. Okay? Now, we're going to use the cash base, we're going to use the accrual basis of accounting, aren't we? So we can get rid of that cash basis for now. 
do a little origami here, okay? So we're going to use the accrual basis of accounting. Let's talk about how this would look in our, our journal entries, okay? Okay, first of all, I want to make the journal entry that we would make on 12-29-10, okay? On 12-29-10 is when we paid the $6,000 for the insurance coverage that will be for January 1 through June 30th. So our journal entry is, well, cash is going out. Cash is credited for $6,000. Do you know what is debited for $6,000? Very good. Prepaid insurance. I'll abbreviate if you'll let me. We debit prepaid insurance, which is an asset, and we credit cash. Now, some of you might say, hey, wait, Dave, you have cash in this, and that violates what you just told us, okay? This is not an AJE, okay? That's just a regular journal entry. Plus, it wasn't made on the last day of the period, right? But this is the journal entry when we actually paid for that auto insurance. Cool? Now, if we were to post this journal entry, if we were to post this journal entry, let me sneak in a T account over here for prepaid insurance, then we would debit it right here for $6,000. You with me? That's not very clear. Okay. Matter of fact, let me do a better, let me do a better AJ, let me do a better T account for us. At $12.29, we do a debit for $6,000. You with me? Okay. All right. January 31 comes. How much of that insurance has been used up? Now think about it. We paid $6,000 for six months of coverage, so basically $1,000 per month. It's from January 1st to June 30th. January 31st is now here. How much of that auto insurance have we used up? $1,000. How much? $1,000. 1000 right? It's kind of like if somebody, Jessica, were nice enough to give you like a $6,000 Best Buy gift card. Wouldn't that be sweet? And you've used up 1000 of it. How much do you have left on your card now? 5000 but you've used up 1000 right? This is where the AJE comes in. Take a look at that. Let's see what our AJE is. Now, I told you that AJEs are made on the last day of the period. Now, this company happens to do AJEs and financial statements each month. Okay? So, this is our AJE, what I'm going to write below. Now, how much of that asset has been used up, you said? You were right. You said 1,000, right? So do you see where we have to credit or decrease prepaid insurance for $1,000? Isn't that decreasing prepaid insurance for 1,000? Do you see that? What do you think we debit for $1,000? What do you think we debit for a thousand? Well, let's go back to this. We just affected a, we just affected an asset, so we're either going to debit an expense or debit a revenue, right? And I told you that every AJE either debits an expense or credits a revenue. So let's let me ask the question again. We decreased or credited prepaid insurance because that's how much was used up. What do you think we debit? insurance expense. Does that make sense, folks? Because think about it. Let's go back to that T account. 
Now let's post this journal entry, the RAJE to our T account. That was the AJA we, AJE we made on 131. What is our balance of that account now? And isn't that what you said is how much we have left of that asset to use up? Is this registering with y'all? Okay. Does this follow the rules of AJEs I gave you? Is it made on the last day of the period? Yes, because they do monthly financials. Is cash a part of an AJE? It's not part of this AJE. Do we follow the rule of REAL? Yes, because we decreased an asset and we debited an expense. Does the AJE either follow one of these? Yes, it follows this one. We debited an expense and what do we credit? Prepaid insurance, which is an asset. Do you see how it follows all that rules? Do you see, folks, where if we did not do this AJE, do you see where our asset would be overstated? It would be showing still that we had $6,000 of prepaid insurance, and we don't at 131.11. And do you see how that expense would, of 1000 would not be on the books if we did not make that AJE? You with me? Okay. So when we deal with adjusting journal entries in regards to prepaid assets, we are always concerned with how much of the asset was used up. Okay? How much was used up? We used up a thousand of that, so we have to decrease the asset and we have to book that as expense to show it was used up and it's expensed on the financials. You with me? Questions? Questions on that? All right. Now, I will tell you, this subject, this chapter probably more than any other, is one that you cannot learn by just me doing this. If you're just thinking, I'm just going to watch Krug and I'll get it figured out. No. You've got to make AJEs. You've got to make AJEs. AJEs. And the first time you do AJE, sometimes it's kind of clunky, and you get it wrong, and you're, you're, you're debiting the wrong thing or crediting the wrong thing, okay? You just got to keep doing it. You'll get it if you work through it. But if you're just watching me or just doing a little bit of your homework, you're probably going to bomb this on the test. So I'm going to, because I love all of you, I'm going to give you a lot of homework in this chapter, okay? Cassie. AJEs is it only for like prepaid like insurance or whatever that's a great Anything question prepaid. that's a great question it's kind of going where we're gonna go now okay so let me <clears throat> that's a that's a great segue into where we're gonna go in just a minute but before we do that looking back at this Elmo is there in the AJE we made right here is there any questions now let me ask you this before we leave this February 28th, 2011 rolls around. How much more of that prepaid asset or prepaid insurance asset have we used up? How much more? Another, we've used up another thousand, right? Correct? Looking back at this, do you see where we will make the same AJE on February 28th, 2011? Because we've used up another thousand. We need to decrease our prepaid insurance by another thousand and of course when we post this the prepaid insurance will be properly reflected at its current balance at that, at that time of four thousand right do you see how we'll make this AJE at the end of January February March April May and June each time the AJE will look like this each time we're using up or expensing one thousand of it and at the very end of June 30th what is that asset worth it's worth zero. It's worth zero. And it will be reflected on our books as an asset with zero amount, balance, or account balance, because we have used it all up, just like you might use up your Best Buy gift card. Cool? All right. Now, let's go to that question that Cassie asked. She was saying, awesome, Dave. This is brilliant. You kind of said that, didn't you? 
sort of. You said, but what are the other types of AJEs? Well, we just talked about uh, we just talked about prepaid assets, and there's another type we're going to talk about here in a second. But there's five categories of AJEs. There's ones having to do with prepaid assets or expenses, depreciation, unearned revenue, something called accrued expenses, and something called accrued revenues. Now, I don't, well, I don't, don't think, I know, we're not going to get through all five types of these today, okay? I'm hoping to maybe get through the first one or two. Cool? And I will tell you, we spend more time on the first category than we do any of the other categories. So if you're going, holy smokes, this is going to take a while. Well, it takes longer to explain the first type than it does the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Cool? But those are the five types of adjusting journal issues. That kind of answers your question, doesn't it? All right, let's take a look at an example on your slides. This is similar to the one we just did. Um, on December 1st of 2011, Scott Company paid $12,000 for insurance for December 2011 through May of 2012. They recorded the expenditures prepaid insurance on December 1 of 2011. Okay? Now this is a little different because they paid on December 1, and that's actually when the coverage started, right? But on December 1, they debited prepaid insurance and they credited cash for the $12,000. Now, what adjustment is required on January 31, 2011? How much of that insurance have they used up at the end of December for December? 2000. It's it's 12,000 for 6 months. So, our adjusting journal entry is very similar to what we just showed. You decrease the prepaid insurance asset by 2000 and you book that 2000 as expense. Cool. All right. Now there's another question. Or okay, sorry. Let me back up. There's the T accounts for this, right? After you've made that December 31st AJE, the prepaid insurance asset is properly reflected at a 10,000 balance, which is how much of the asset you have left to go. Cool? All right. We're going to talk about a different one, but let's come off this for a second. Okay? We're going to talk about, this is, we're still in that first category, but this is kind of another type that's in that first category. And it has to do with office supplies. When we purchase office supplies, we debit an account called office supplies, and it's an asset. We're going to talk about that in a second. Let me go to a different example, maybe one that will hit closer to home. Marlon, you're over 21, aren't you? I know you are, because you work at a restaurant, okay? All right. So let me put this into perspective, Marlon. Let's say at the beginning of the weekend, you bought 12 beers and you put them in your refrigerator. It, your refrigerator was empty before then, but you bought 12 beers and you put them in your refrigerator, okay, on Saturday morning. Then you left for the weekend and you came back Sunday night and there were three beers left in your refrigerator, right? Somebody has drank or is it drunk? Somebody has drank how many beers? Too many. Okay. <laughs> Too many, but specifically um, nine. 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 Right? Yeah. If you put 12 in there and you leave for a while and you come back and there's three left, somebody drank nine beers. Hopefully it's not the same person. And hopefully they're not driving, right? Does this make, this is, this is obvious, right? Mm -hmm. You put 12 beers in the fridge, there's three left at the end of the weekend. Nine of them were used up or drunk. Okay? Think about that concept when we look at office supplies. Let's take a look at an example. Look at your screen. All right. During 2011, Scott Company purchased 15,500 of supplies. And they recorded the expenditure as supplies, which is an asset. Now, on December 31 of 2011, they did a count of the supplies, and there was $26.55 on hand. You with me? So how much of the supplies were thus used up? Well, it's not as clean a number, is it? But there was 12845 that were used up of office supplies. Do you see that? 
If you want to, think of it this way. In your refrigerator, you purchased 15,500 bottles of beer. On the end of the year, you did a count of beer and you found 2,655 bottles on hand. Well, somebody drunk 12,845 bottles of beer. That was quite a party, wasn't it? Do you understand? So we have to make this AJE. We make it on the last day of the period. Cash is not part of this AJE. We have to decrease our supplies account by crediting it, and we have to book 12845 of expense so that our financial statements will be recorded accurately. Does that make you see how this is kind of similar to prepaid? I don't know if they give us a T account here. Good. If we did the AJE, we post that and it posts right here and it posts right here. Do you see where if we did not post this AJE, our supplies asset would be greatly overstated on our financial statements? And we would have never booked our expense. So our net income would actually be overstated as well. But by making this AJE right here, we have recognized an expense and we have decreased an asset. It follows our REAL rule, doesn't it? And it going to the Elmo, is it one of these? It, it's one of these, isn't it? Is it one of these? Every AJE is one of these. We debited an expense here, supplies expense, correct? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, questions on that supplies. Any questions? Is it necessary to indicate on the journal entry that it is an adjustment journal entry? Oh, that's a great question. The question was, is do, you, do you need to indicate on your, uh, general, in your general journal that it's an AJE? Because you're right, it, it's, a, it's a journal entry. It's going to be recorded with the other journal entries. Um, now, there's certainly going to be some hints that it's an adjusting journal entry because it's going to be on the last day of the period, but usually in the description, yeah, they'll say adjusting journal entry to record supplies used up, okay? And when I go in and audit companies or consult with them, I'll usually see a lot of journal entries made on the last day of the period because they're adjusting the books. Or uh, that sounds like it's fishy, but they're adjusting their accounts so their financial statements will be reflected accurately. You ever hear anybody say, oh, it's really busy at work. We're, we're closing out the year. Well, a lot of that is making these adjustments so, so their financial statements are accurate, okay? So you probably would in your little explanation say something. But it looks a lot like a regular journal entry, doesn't it? Debits have to equal the credits and all that, okay? And for your purposes, all your AJEs will just have two accounts, one account being debited, one account being credited, okay? So maybe that helps too. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, I want to at least touch on to this next category, and that has to, had, has to do with depreciation. Depreciation is a special type of a AJE for a using up of an asset. Specifically, it's for a fixed asset, such as an automobile, or a piece of equipment, or a building, or a conveyor belt, or a truck. Those are all fixed assets, okay? Now, there's only one type of fixed asset that we do not depreciate. We'll talk about this later, but land is a fixed asset and it's not depreciated. But everything else is depreciated. Now, I want to caution you here. Let's come off this for a second. When we think of, you've heard the term depreciation before, right? And I want to caution you because the way you've used it in the real world or heard it used is sometimes not what we're doing in accounting. What we've probably heard is situations like this. Well, Jake just bought a new, new truck, and he paid $20,000 for it. As soon as he drives it off the lot, it's not worth $20,000. It's a used truck now, right? You've heard people say that? Okay. That may or may not be true. However, what we are doing in depreciating things, in accounting, is spreading the expense out over a reasonable period of time. For example, Let's say you paid $20,000 for that truck. And let's say it was for your company, okay? Um, 
do you see where if you expensed that entire truck in the month that you bought it, that would kind of not be following the matching principle? Because that truck's probably going to last you, what, five years or so maybe? You with, you with me? Wouldn't it be better than, wouldn't it be a better following of the matching principle if you think that 20,000 truck is going to last you five years, if somehow you could depreciate a thousand, or uh, what did I say, five years? If you could depreciate $4,000 each of those five years, doesn't that make more sense? and seem to follow the matching principle, matching the expense to the periods in which that truck helped you create revenue? What if you finance it? Well, let's, let's not go there yet, okay? Let's not go there yet. But it, it makes more sense if we can depreciate $4,000 each of those five years, or specifically 1000 a quarter, or 333 a month, right? So for our purposes in accounting, folks, Depreciation is spreading the expense out over a reasonable amount of time. Now, after one year, I've depreciated 4,000 of your 20,000 vehicle, correct? Am I saying the market value of that truck is 16,000 and we had to depreciate to write it down to market value? No, I'm not. Listen to me. Hear me now and believe me later, okay? That's old school. You probably don't even know what that means. When we depreciate, we are not doing it to try to write down our asset to market value. Because face it, after a year, what you think that truck is worth versus what you think it's worth versus what I think it's worth versus what Anna thinks it's worth is probably four different amounts. Okay? For our purposes in accounting, we depreciate to spread the expense out over a reasonable period of time. We are not trying to write it down to market value. Cool? You with me? All right, I'll probably repeat that because it's important and a common, common mistake people make. Okay, when we adjust for depreciation, going to the slides. What we do at depreciation is the process of computing expense from allocating the cost of plant and equipment over their expected useful life. That's fancy language for what I just said. How do we compute depreciation? Well, we take the cost of the asset minus what we call the salvage value or the residual value. Those are the same terms for the, different terms for the same thing. That's for what we think we can sell it at the end of that period of time. In the example we just did, I used a salvage value of zero for Jake's $20,000 truck. And businesses will often use a salvage value or a residual value of zero. But sometimes they'll say, we think we can sell it for $2,000 at the end of five years. So, straight line depreciation expense is your cost of your asset minus the salvage value divided by your estimated useful life. Okay? Estimated useful life. Let's look at an example. I think it will make more sense. On January 1 of 2011, Barton purchased equipment for $62,000 cash. The equipment has an estimated useful life of five years and they expect to sell the equipment at the end of its life for $2,000 cash. What's depreciation expense for the year ended December 31, 2011? Well, we take the cost of the asset, $62,000, minus our estimated residual value of $2,000, divided by our estimated life of five years, and this means we're going to depreciate $12,000 per year. Okay? Are you with me? We're going to depreciate $12,000 per year. Now, how does that journal entry look? It, we debit an account called depreciation expense, and you might think we credit the asset itself, but we do not. Here's how the journal entry looks. We debit depreciation expense for the $12,000, and this company ju just makes AJEs at the end of each year. And we do not credit equipment. We do not credit equipment. We do not credit the asset like we did with supplies and prepaid insurance. We use an account called accumulated depreciation. Now, whenever I introduce a new account, please know me well. I want you to know the type of account, the balance of the account, and what financial statement it's on. Favorite t test question. Accumulated depreciation is a contra-asset account. What the heck is a contra-asset account? 
Okay. Okay, come off there for a second, real quick. The word contra, what does the word contra mean? Like contradict or contrast? It means opposite. So if you say, I think the Chiefs are really good this year, I might say, Jessica, I'm going to contradict you. I think they're horrible. I'm going to take the opposite view. The word contra means opposite. Okay? So let's go back to the slide. Well, no, let's not. Let's not. Come back to me. Me, please. Okay. An asset is a normal debit or credit balance account. An asset is a normal debit, debit balance account. So back, now back to the slide. What balance do you think a contra asset has? A credit. Because contra means opposite. An asset is a debit balance account. A contra asset is a credit balance account. So we do not credit in depreciation. We do not credit the asset itself. We credit an account called accumulated depreciation, which is a contra asset. Now, why we do that and not the asset itself, I will explain next time. Okay? But I do want to show you how this looks on your financial statements. On the balance sheet, and we'll probably go a minute or two minutes over our time, Dane, okay? Um, we show the asset itself, and then we subtract out the contra asset. And we show the net book value of the asset. So we don't reduce equipment. We credit accumulated depreciation, the contra asset. We deduct it from the asset, and we get our net book value. Are you with me? Now, I would encourage you um, to read about these things in your book. It's kind of complicated. I know it's new. But what I want you to do for your homework is the following. I want you to read your book. I am going to give you three handouts. Let's go to the Elmo and just take a look at what those are going to be look like. Um, the first one is a handout on prepaid asset AJEs. And in each instance, I want you to first answer a key question, and then I want you to make your AJE. Each of these is separate. Do not analyze this one and considering this one or anything. They're all separate from each other. So I want you to do your handout on prepaid asset AJEs. I also have a handout on office supplies AJEs. You with me? And I want you to do that entire thing. Again, there's a key question to answer each time and an AJE to make independent of each other. And then lastly, because I love you, I want you to do this handout on depreciation, AJEs. It's going to be the same thing. On each instance, I ask you a key question and I ask you to make the AJE, each company separately considered from the others. For you folks at home, as always, I have these handouts under the Lessons tab. Cool? But that's all I want you to do for homework. It seems like a lot, but you're not doing that much. It's not going to take as long as you all think. So quit your whining. I'm just kidding. You're not whining. Okay? You guys did great on your test. So, uh, for you folks at home, get these off of Angel. For you folks here, let me hand them out before you leave. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.